Egyptian patterns. Welcome back. Objective 9. Objective 9 will have us combust either complete or incompletely. Combustion pattern is burning a fuel to release heat and light energy. The nice thing about these skeletons is they are always the same. The challenge comes in balancing. But it's automatic pilot when predicting the skeleton. The first one reads ethanoic acid incompletely combusts. One of the strategies I like to use is combining like elements for the fuel we are igniting. In ethanoic acid, I count two carbons, a total of four hydrogens, and a combined total of two oxygens. That makes counting when we're balancing go a little easier. C2H4O2, another way of writing ethanoic. When I incompletely combust, the skeleton will tell me, always, always add oxygen. Anything that's burning requires oxygen. But now, in an incomplete combustion, we form carbon monoxide and water. Pattern is always the same. Add oxygen, produce carbon monoxide and water. When we go to balance, remember the strategy, C's, then H's, then O's. Two carbons on the left, I'll start with two on the right. Balancing my carbons first. Four hydrogens on the left, so I'll double my water, repairing the hydrogens. Now let's count for the number of oxygens. Remember the strategy, my suggestion, leave this for last. Always leave it for last. Get everything else working and leave that oxygen coefficient for the last choice. We've got C's working, we've got H's working, let's count. One, two, plus two more is a total of four oxygens on the right. Now this first reactant has two oxygens plus the two more from this. Oh my goodness, we're balanced. A one, one, two, two mole ratio. CH3, CH2 taken twice, COOH completely combusts. Let's add like elements together. C something, H something, O something, where those somethings are the combined totals. Remember this two outside the parentheses being distributed. That tells me there's two carbons plus one more from the original and a fourth total carbon from the Ku functional group of the organic molecule. There's four carbons in that structure. Let's count the H's. Remember the two is being distributed through the parentheses. Two times two is giving me four hydrogens plus three more five, six, seven, and one more at the end, there's a combined total of eight hydrogens. Combined total of oxygens in this structure is two. C4, H8, O2. Completely combusts. Automatic pilot. Combustion requires oxygen, producing carbon dioxide and water. C's, then H's, then O's. Four carbons, I'll start with a four on the right hand side. Eight hydrogens, I'll start with a four to repair the H's on the right hand side. Now let's count how many oxygens on the right. Four times two is eight, plus four more from the water is a combined total of twelve. The left side will need twelve combined total. But look, the first reactant is already donating two. Let's subtract those out. If I take out the two that this guy already contributes to the total we need, that leaves me a remainder of ten that needs to come from this oxygen. Five times two is ten. Adding the two more gives me the twelve we need to keep the equation balanced. One, five, four, four. Number three, a simple hydrocarbon called methane, CH4, incompletely combusts. 
automatic pilot ignite that fuel by adding oxygen producing carbon monoxide and water incompletely combusts stops with carbon monoxide C's H's and O's and let's count carbons look good the hydrogens I'll repair by starting with a two in front of the water now count your oxygens on the right side one from the first product and two more gives me an odd number here's a scenario where the old trick of double everything double it and see what happens if I start by doubling my fuel called methane I can see then that I'd have to repair by doubling what we determined for CO and we'd also have to double to repair the hydrogens two C's eight H's and now let's count the O's two from the CO four from the water gives me a total of six oxygens leaving this coefficient for last always a nice trick we can get three two three two four balances that equation the old trick of double the odd number C3, H2, C3, A. I'll start that over, sorry. CH3, CH2, CH3. Let's combine like elements. C something, H something, where we're combining. I see a total of one, two, three carbons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hydrogens. Combusts completely. Burning pattern says add oxygen produce carbon dioxide for a complete combustion and a water. C's and H's and O's, let's get started. Three carbons, eight hydrogens, and now count your O's. Three times two from the first product gives me six, and we'll add on four more from the water, a combined total of ten. This reactant is not contributing any, so all ten have to come from that oxygen a one five three four propane combusts completely C3 H8 completely combusts do you notice what I'm noticing this is indeed the same written long form written short form this is a structural formula in organic chemistry. This is a molecular formula, but it indeed is representing the same molecule. A 1, 5, 3, 4, just as determined in question 4. With our combustion pattern, the skeletons are very straightforward, and then balancing C's, then H's, then O's. We have one more to complete for our practice test B. That's a distributive practice question. Let's do a little review looking at objective 10, a distributive practice. The first question will ask us to classify as an element, compound, solution, a heterogeneous mixture. This is my sneaky way of remembering that solution is another word to say it's a homogeneous mixture. Same word. Air in the room. The air is a blend of many different gases, and it's blended to create an evenly distributed mixture. Mixtures that are blended throughout are called homogeneous, and that's the same as saying air is a solution. Letter B, the mercury in a thermometer. Mercury has a symbol. Mercury is an element. It's number 80. It is an element. Baking soda in my refrigerator. Baking soda is a common name for sodium hydrogen carbonate. Baking soda is sodium bicarbonate. We use that in the lab when we have an acid spill. Compounds have chemical formulas. Sodium bicarbonate is a compound. And the last choice here, chocolate chip cookie, chocolate chip ice cream I ate for lunch, I wish. 
I see many things distributed throughout. That's a heterogeneous mixture. I can see the individual chocolate chips distributed throughout the ice cream. Hetero. Let's move on to number two. How many liters would 45 grams of argon occupy at STP? This is a mole map review. Good old fashioned mole map says if I start with 45 grams of argon and I want to go from the scale into the mole and then north to the balloon. I don't have a mole map nearby. Hope 45 grams of argon can be converted into a mole by using the molar mass of argon. And if I find argon's molar mass, I'll use 39.9. One mole of argon has a formula weight of 39.9. Grams have canceled and I'm in the middle of my mole map, moles. I want to go north to the balloon. I know the volume of one mole is always 22.4 liters, regardless of the identity of the gas. Divide, multiply. Forty-five grams of argon divided by its molar mass of 39.9 times the molar volume of 22.4 and that balloon would be 25.26, I'll say 25.3 liters big. A mole map review. What is the mass of hydrogen atoms in a 290 gram sample of ammonium nitrate fertilizer? A percent composition problem. 290 grams of ammonium nitrate. Ammonium nitrate. Two polyatomic ions hooked together to create a compound. NH4, NO3. We're going to use a percent composition to convert from grams of the element here, noting that our target is grams of H. In my compound, I see that there's four units of hydrogen. Each one would weigh one apiece. So I have a total mass of four grams, part over whole. Let me add a molar mass for us. 14 from the nitrogen plus four more on the hydrogen, another 14 for the nitrogen, and three oxygens gives me a total weight of 80 grams. Part over whole times 290. Notice the grams of compound cancel and I've converted to grams of just the hydrogen. A percent by mass conversion. We'll take our 290 times 4 over 80 part over whole, we get 14 and a half grams of hydrogen. Let's determine a molecular formula for the following compound. I see that its percent by mass is 63.16 coming from the carbon element. 8.77 are being contributed from hydrogen and 28.07 come from the oxygen. We'd like to write a molecular formula so that by the time we're done, it weighs this target of 171 grams. We'll first determine its empirical formula. I'll need to do that by going C something, H something, O something, where those somethings are called subscripts, the lowest whole number mole ratio. I take each of these percentages and I divide by the atomic weight of the element to convert it to moles. We use 12 for the atomic weight of carbon. The atomic weight of hydrogen is 1 and the atomic weight of oxygen is 16. Grams divided by the atomic weights will convert each element into a mole number. 63.16 divided by 12, 
8.77 divided by 1 is 8.77 moles and 28.07 divided by 16 gives us 1.75 moles of oxygen. The smallest number is 1.75. I divide through all of the numbers by the smallest to find the whole number ratio. Smallest number turns into a 1. 5.26 divided by 1.75 and this is exactly 3. 8.77 divided by 1.75 and that is exactly 5. So here's what we know so far. C3H5O1. C3H5O. This is called an empirical formula the lowest subscript ratio. We want to turn this empirical formula into a molecular formula that adds to the target of 171. Let's find the empirical formula mass and see where we're at so far. 12 times 3 from those three carbons added to 5 coming from the oxygen and another 16 grams from one oxygen. The empirical formula mass is 57 grams. If our target is 171 and we're at 57 so far, I'll divide that and find that the molecular formula needs to be tripled for the weight. Tripling the subscripts we now have C9H15O3. This is a molecular formula that adds to the target of 171 and yet can reduce down to the simplest ratio of 3 to 5 to 1. We have one more. Calculating a percent composition of iron to acetate. Iron with its plus 2, the polyatomic ion acetate was a minus 1, so we have FeC2H3O2 taken twice. This actually gives us quite a few answers. We have a percent by mass of iron to report out. We'll have a percent mass of carbon, a percent mass of hydrogen, and a percent by mass of oxygen. Four different elements are composing this compound. We have a percent by mass for each element. So we have a little work to do here. We've got to find how much each individual atom weighs and put it over the entire compound. Iron has an atomic weight and there's just one of them. So iron is 50, here it is, 55.85. I'll say just 55.8. Carbon, I know, weighs 12, but I'm counting 2 times 2. There's 4 of them in that formula, so that's a total of 48. Hydrogen weighs 1, but there's a total of 6 of them, so its total contribution is 6 grams. And the oxygen weighs 16, but there's 4 of them all together in the compound. So it is adding to 64. Let's find the total and take each part over the whole. 55.8 from the iron plus 48 from the carbon plus 6 from the hydrogen added to 64 from the oxygen and the total combined weight of 173.8 grams is the total. Now what we'll do is express each part over whole for the element to find the percent by mass. Iron, its contribution of 55.8 grams over the total of 173.8 expressed as a percent. Carbon, its total contribution was 48 grams over the total of 173.8 
expressed as a percent. Hydrogen contributed 6 grams over the total of 173.8, expressed as a percent. And the last one would be for oxygen. It contributed 64 grams to the total of 173.8, expressed as a percent. I've got them set up. We'll just hit them out. Hit with me so we'll be sure to get common answers. The iron contribution divided by the total, expressed as a percent, 32.1. Forty-eight divided by the total, expressed as a percent, 27.6. Running out of room here. Contribution of hydrogen divided by 173.8, expressed as a percent, and we find 3.45% by mass of hydrogen. And one more to hit, 64 divided by 173.8, express that as a percent. The last good piece of advice, let's add these to see if we're close to 100, knowing that we might have a little rounding. 36.8% of oxygen. Added to 3.45% for carbon. No, that's hydrogen, my bad. Plus 27.6 coming from carbon. And 32.1 from the iron. Pretty darn close. We found 100% of the mass. Each element is reported as its own individual contribution. It's percent by mass. And there is your final A-plus from the Chemical Reactions Unit.